You are now going to live through a moment of panic in a man's life. An experience so incredible that you may not believe it. Yet its premise is true. This is the man. All you need to know about him, you will know in exactly one minute and 42 seconds. And then, panic. What happened to this man could have happened to only one in a million. George Mason, age 42, insurance broker. The date, September 20th. The time, 2.30 a.m. The place, a deserted subway station. Say, mister? I said your friend seems to have had one too many. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mason realized that the man in the middle was dead. Mason now knew this was murder, and he could identify the murderers. He was marked for death. At 2.35 in the morning, George Mason knew that the man in the middle was dead. He now had only one thought, to get away from them alive. In 10 seconds, the train would be at the next station. He had to risk it. This was his only chance. his life.
How much did you lose in the poker game tonight? Just a few dollars. Where? In the subway. Oh, really, George, you and your imagination. I tell you, I did. These two men, they must have been gangsters. They had a body, a dead man. On the subway? Yes, they wanted me to think he was drunk. I thought he was at first, but he wasn't. He was dead. Well, you're home now, so it's all over. No, it isn't. They know I know he was dead. And they know I can identify them. Did you call the police? No. Well, why not? You know what those men would do to me? You know what happens to people who identify criminals? Big hero one day, dead the next. Maybe the best thing to do is just forget about it. Forget about it? You wouldn't say that if you'd been there. If you'd seen the way those two men looked at me. One of them had a gun. What are you going to do? I don't know. I really don't know. Remember what I told you last night? Oh, honey, I wish you'd stop worrying about that. No, here it is. This is the man, the one on the subway. Here's the story, listen. The body of Louis Morelli, key witness in underworld probe, was found floating face down in the East River early this morning. Police saw the killing as underworld vengeance and retaliation for Morelli's agreement to testify against other mobsters. He was going to testify, too. Oh, honey, it can't be the same man. Oh, I know it's your imagination. I didn't imagine this. But how do you know it's the same man you saw? This is his picture. The one I saw. The one in the middle. Well, then there's only one thing to do. You've got to call the police. No. Don't call them, I will. Ethel. Don't. But I don't see what you've got to lose. Only my life. Now, how could those men possibly find out that you're the one who identified them? The newspapers would be sure to print the story. They'd name me, probably print my picture, give our address. I'd be as good as dead. But how long can you go on like this? I don't know. You won't change your mind? No. And don't you say anything to anybody. Not anybody.
Mr. Mason. Mr. Mason. Hmm? Oh, Helen, I'm sorry. If I didn't get much sleep last night. Here, this will help to wake you up. Thanks. There's a man waiting to see you. A man? Who is it? A Mr. Smith. Smith? What Smith? He didn't say. What does he want? Won't say. Says he has to talk to you personally. Says it's very important. I don't want to see him. I mean, I'm too busy. Tell him I'm not in. But he's very well dressed. He might bring you a big policy, Mr. Mason. Tell him to call back again at the first of the week. man who was just here. What exactly did he look like? Well, he was rather heavy set, wore expensive clothes. You mean flashy? I suppose. Yes, you might call him flashy. Oh. What is it? Nothing. I just noticed he forgot to take his newspaper. could stand the strain no longer. There was only one way out. He would take his wife's advice and go to the police. This is Mr. Mason, Sergeant. Says he's got important information about the Morelli killing. Morelli? Hey, wait, you better stick around for this. What do you know about it? Well, I saw the men who did it. I can identify them. Did you see them dump them in the river? Is that what you mean? No, I, I saw them on the subway with the body. There were two of them. And one was... The subway. The only place we missed. It was last night. I mean, this morning. One of them had a gun. Well, wait a minute. We'll have to do this properly. Call Riker in here. Right. We'll have to have a clerk take your statement. Sit down. Is this the dead man you saw? Yes, that's him, all right. Well, it's Morelli. <laughs> I hope you've got something for us, Mason. We can't seem to make a dent in this case. We had Morelli all primed to talk, and he disappears. Uh, first, you better give us your full name. George Mason. Your address? 450 Franklin Square East. Now about the men in the subway. Exactly what time was it you saw them? About 2.30 this morning. That would be the 20th. Now you say that you can identify the murderers. Yes, I can. Well, will you give us their descriptions? Now make sure you get this, Riker. Yes, sir. Face to face with one of the murderers, right in the police station. Mason didn't know who to trust, and now they had his name and address. But you just said that you could identify the killers. I... 
I can't remember. Well, think, Mason. Didn't you see some identifying marks, like a scar or a mole or some unusual feature, deformity? I don't know. It was hard to see. You must have noticed what they wore, the color of their hair and eyes. No, nothing. How about their voices? Was there anything unusual when they talked? No, nothing special. And what was the idea of saying you had information about Morelli's killers? Well, I thought I knew, but... Now I don't remember. Maybe he means he'd know the men if he saw them again. Maybe that's what he means. No, I'm not sure. Look at these mug shots. See if you can recognize them. It's no use. I wouldn't remember. You might as well leave, Riker. I better get going. My wife's expecting me. Uh, just a minute, Mason. Why don't you level with us? There's nothing more I can tell you. You're lying, Mason. You had something to say and you lost your nerve. Now, why? No, I... I no don't... man would come in here with a tip and then clam up. Not without reason. You know something, Mason? Go on. Why don't you spill it? I'm sorry. I can't help you. I've got to be going. All right. We can't keep you. Not now. But you'll be hearing from us, Mason. Yes. that we're going to call the police right now. I did. I went over there. It was the worst thing I could have done. Why? What do you mean? The detective called in the clerk to take down my statement. Do you know who that clerk was? One of the gunmen I saw on the subway. In the police station? Yes. And just now, as I got home, the other gunman was waiting outside. What are we going to do? Well, you're going to stay right here in the apartment. But where will you go? I don't know, but you're going to stay right here. But George! They don't know which is our apartment. Now stay here. And keep this door locked.
On your feet. Come on. I got this one coming down the fire escape. Well, Mason, are you still afraid to talk? I'm sorry, officer. But at the police station today, I thought, well, maybe even you. I kind of thought you did. But we've had Riker under close observation for the last 12 hours. We figured he was our man even when you were at the office, but we had to be sure. I wish I'd only known. Will you identify them now? Yes. These are the two men I saw in the subway with Morelli's body. Well, there's nothing to be afraid of now, Mason. I'd better go up and tell my wife. Thanks. Thanks very much. And next time, trust the police. I will. I certainly will. For suspense, adventure, and excitement, be sure to be with us for the next episode of Panic! <laughs>